We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Thank you for being with us today uh, at this session. Uh, I'm not able yet to join through the Zoom, so I will do <coughs> in an analog way. Um, we, so I don't know who is still connected, but I hope that I, ah, okay, now I'm trying to opening it. So I hope to see you. Um, so, welcome to the session uh, that we have organized uh, um, as EDMO on uh, a multi-stakeholder approach to tackling online disinformation. Uh, we are in Ballroom C in Katowice. Um, I'm here um, in presence while all the other participants are connecting from abroad. Um, and I think that uh, we have all the participants here, I hope. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, participants. Christina is here. Liz is here. Lubos is, is here. Sonia is here. Giovanni is here. Eric is here. Okay, we are all present here. So let's talk, let's start immediately uh, to go in the middle, uh, in media res, as we say in Latin. Um, the session of today is to, um, to conclude a, a discussion that has started in the previous IGF, in which we were participating in many initiatives, trying to say how we can tackle this information, how we can uh, concretely do something uh, in, um, in the initiatives to, of the institutions and of the civil society and of the media in order to tackle this information. And um, one of the most promising things that were announced here at the IGF was the, um, the European Union initiatives in this uh, sense. And um, I remember that um, the, we had the speakers of the European Union announcing at high level that uh, something concrete will be done. And today I'm proud to be here because one of these initiatives has been uh, concretized and is EDMO, that is the Euro European Digital Media Observatory uh, that is based in Florence at the uh, University, European University Institute. Um, but there is Lisa that will explain you more. And after some months of um, action uh, and preparation. Now EDMO is in, in its rolling phase and uh, we will listen more about how it works and how it fits into the strategy of the European Union to tackle this information. Uh, in order to put this in a frame, we have as main sp um, speaker now, Christina Stump, that is responsible DG Connect exactly for this topic. So Christina, if you are ready, the floor is yours. We have the slides here. Uh, if you, we can originate from here if you want without sharing the screen or you can share the screen if you prefer. Please let us know. Thank you very much. Good morning. I will see if I manage to, uh, no, I don't manage to uh, share my screen. It's disabled, but if you put it on the screen, that would be perfect. Thank you very much. So it, might, it is my pleasure. Uh, to uh, discuss this very important topic uh, with you uh, today, with these excellent uh, speakers. And what I wanted to do uh, before diving into the very important subject of, of EDMO and how it contributes uh, to the fight against disinformation in the EU, I wanted to outline uh, in a broad uh, strokes uh, the, the European Commission's overall strategy uh, to fight disinformation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, one of uh, these, um, uh, one of the key elements uh, of this strategy 
is uh, the code of uh, practice on disinformation about probably many of you have heard. This is a self-regulatory uh, code signed by major online platforms like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, TikTok, and Mozilla, and, where, uh, and the advertising sector. Uh, and uh, the signatories commit there uh, to a set of measures uh, to reduce uh, the dissemination of disinformation on uh, their platforms. Uh, this is an instrument that is in operation since 2018. And the commission has assessed uh, one year after its operation how successful it has been. Uh, we have concluded that it has brought uh, important results. At the same time, we have also concluded that uh, it needs strengthening to be a more efficient instrument to fight disinformation in particular uh, in view of uh, today's challenges. That's why we have issued uh, in uh, May this year the guidance on how to strengthen the code of practice on disinformation. Um, I, I, we can still uh, stay a little while on, on, on the previous slide, um, but otherwise also uh, fine like this. Uh, so basically uh, what we have uh, done uh, in uh, the uh, guidance is uh, to set out uh, in regarding all areas of the code, uh, what are the commission expectations uh, from the signatories uh, uh, to um, uh, strengthen the code, we set out uh, very clearly uh, what um, needs to be done in all areas of the code, uh, notably uh, the monetization of this information, so cutting financial incentives uh, through advertising placements, then uh, uh, it contains also measures regarding transparency of uh, political advertising, issues-based advertising, also measures uh, to strengthen the integrity of services against manipulative behavior, uh, empowering users uh, to make sure that they have more information available uh, to, uh, to recognize this information, also to flag this information. And it is also key uh, to increase uh, the coverage uh, of fact-checking, to improve the cooperation with fact-checkers and researchers, also to provide uh, more data for researchers because these uh, remains, uh, uh, these remain important problems. And here, I also want to stress this, there is an important link uh, also between the guidance and uh, the work of, of uh, Edmo regarding fact-checking and research. Uh, um, the um, strengthened code uh, foresees also a broader participation, so more uh, uh, platforms and more players joining, and I'm happy to announce that already 26 uh, new entities are, are joining the code, including uh, new and smaller online platforms, but also, for example, uh, fact checkers or other organizations uh, that con can contribute to fight uh, disinformation. Uh. What is important uh, to uh, mention in this context, it's also uh, that uh, the Digital Services Act proposed uh, by the European Commission, and that is currently in negotiation, is uh, uh, changing uh, the um, nature of uh, the uh, uh, code of practice, notably if it becomes from uh, once the DSA is adopted, uh, and of course in the form as adopted by the co-legislators, uh, the idea is that um, the code of practice would change from a self-regulatory instrument to a co-regulatory instrument uh, for uh, very large online platforms, which means uh, that uh, they can fulfill the risk mitigation obligation coming from uh, the Digital Services Act through the code of practice on disinformation which means uh, in practical terms that there will be uh, an enforcement mechanism uh, behind uh, the code for very large online platforms uh, to make sure that they fulfill their uh, commitments in the code. So this is uh, really, uh, this will be a big uh, change. Then uh, maybe also to, to important to outline the, in broad strokes the other legislative in initiatives of the commission that are important in this regard. This is also the legislative proposal on political advertising that has been uh, published recently and that contains transparency obligations, labeling obligations uh, for political advertising, including uh, online and also uh, restrictions regarding targeting. So this is also complementing uh, the code of practice, these legislative measures in this area. And as you probably know, the commission will also propose uh, a Media Freedom Act uh, soon in order uh, 
to uh, increase uh, the transparency and independence of the EU media sector and also uh, strengthen the governance uh, structure of public service media. So this is uh, the overall uh, strategy in very uh, big strokes. And let me get then uh, to the role uh, of EDMOA. And I will be very brief because I will have excellent uh, speakers uh, after me. Um, explaining. So basically, uh, uh, the European Commission is support, has supported the creation of the European Digital Media Observatory because uh, we uh, think that the phenomenon of, of disinformation can be only uh, tackled uh, through a multi-stakeholder approach, notably uh, through uh, the collaboration and the creation of a strong cross-border and multidisciplinary community of researchers and fact-checkers. Uh, throughout Europe that can uh, work uh, on uh, the fight against disinformation. Uh? And that's why uh, EDMO has been set up. The central hub is operational since uh, June uh, 2020. And uh, that is uh, basically um, the goal, uh, as said, is fostering and supporting a cross-border and multidisciplinary community uh, of fact checkers and researchers to detect, analyze, explore, expose uh, this information threat and to, to help this community to carry out uh, their work, to have access to data uh, and uh, to improve cooperation and increase fact checking uh, throughout Europe. It is also important in this context that uh, um, the EDMOA regional hubs, uh, eight has been already awarded and more is coming up. Uh, uh, to uh, complement uh, the Edmore Regional Hub's coverage uh, throughout the EU. Here again, uh, the, the role is uh, to detect disinformation campaigns, uh, to uh, provide support to test checkers, researchers, uh, to carry out media literacy activities and cooperate also uh, with national authorities uh, for uh, the monitoring of the online platforms policies. Uh, uh, and the digital media ecosystem. And here actually all the players come all uh, together because this also means uh, help in monitoring the court's, uh, um, court's uh, implementation. And here uh, we have also uh, uh, ERGA that is contributing uh, in this regard regarding uh, the monitoring. Uh, so this would be really in very broad strokes how we see uh, EDMO contributing in an important way to the fight against disinformation. And uh, I am looking forward uh, to the upcoming speakers to tell you more about how this is done uh, on the ground. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christina, for your introduction, very comprehensive. Uh, now we go directly on the ECDMO activities, and for this we have Lisa Ginsburg, that is currently Acting Secretary General of the ECDMO at the European University Institute in Florence. Uh, Lisa, do you have some slides also? So Yes, you... thank you, Giacomo. So will you run the slides from there or should I try sharing my screen? No, 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 no we will run from here. If... Great, thank you. So thank you very much uh, for organizing this great event. It's a great pleasure to present Edmo to a broad international community as that of the IGF. So um, as Christina has already introduced, um, the idea behind EDMO is to build a multi-stakeholder platform. So I think, yes, here we go, the next slide. Um, okay, so EDMO aims to act as a platform, bringing together different actors working to tackle online disinformation. As Christina mentioned, it was established in June 2020 as an independent observatory. Um, and it is uh, also sometimes termed uh, digital services infrastructure and a community builder. So the idea is precisely this, on one hand, this multi-stakeholder approach of bringing together um, different stakeholders working to tackle online disinformation, including fact checkers, academic researchers, social media platforms, and media literacy practitioners, amongst others. So at the heart of uh, the idea of Edmo is the idea that strengthening societal resilience is 
perhaps one of the best future-proof ways to tackle online disinformation precisely through this multi-stakeholder approach. Um, and the other fundamental, let's say, idea behind Edmo is the idea that in order to adequately tackle online disinformation, we first need to better understand online disinformation, including its actors, its vectors, its tools, the way disinformation is spread, the impact it has on society. Um, so precisely for this reason, Edmo aims to foster this multidisciplinary and multi-stakeholder approach and community. Um, so it offers a, it aims to offer a body of facts, evidence, and tool to tackle online disinformation and better inform the actors working in this field. Um, as Christina mentioned, it is funded by the EU, but is works completely independently. Um, next slide, please. And it is based in a consortium. So we are based at the European University Institute in Florence, but we have a number of partners, including the Athens Technology Center, Aros University, and Pagella Politica, of which we have uh, Giovanni Zagni here today. So next slide, please. I'm going to very briefly present some of the main pillars of Edmo's work. Um, and as you will hear from the different speakers today, there's a lot to the different strands. So I'm, try I'm going to try and give a very broad overview and then my colleagues will complement this. Um, so the first pillar is to have, a, we've already established a secure online collaborative platform for fact checkers and the platform for researchers is uh, also about to be launched. So Giovanni Zagni will talk more about this, but the idea is to have a secure space where fact checkers can work together, working to analyze and disinformation campaigns and also conduct joint investigations. We also have a web portal offering a number of resources in this field. Um, Edmo is guided by a governance body, so we have an advisory board which ensures public trust regarding the work of the platform and also an executive board composed of members of the different uh, work pillars, let's say. And one of the tasks of the advisory board, of the governance body, which already Christina has mentioned, is to establish a framework to provide secure access to data of online platforms for research purposes. So in this context, Edmo has established a working group to develop a code of conduct under Article 4 of the GDPR, and this work is currently ongoing, um, but this is a core strand, as Christina mentioned, also of the code of practice, both in its original version and in the future version, hopefully. Um, another, the third strand of Edmo's activities is facilitating and supporting coordination of independent fact checking, which is, of course, also linked to the collaborative platform, and also establishing a number of directories, including fact checks and media literacy material. Um, Sonia is here to talk more about uh, Edmo's media literacy work and plans, so I will leave that to her. And also, Edmo aims to have this role of supporting and facilitating the coordination of academic research activities, including for, through a number of repositories. So there are a number of repositories already um, open on our website, including relevant peer-reviewed scientific literature. We have a repository of uh, active fact-checking organizations in Europe, and I encourage you to continue um, following our webpage because more repositories will come. And finally, very much linked to Christina's introduction is the, let's say, the fifth fifth pillar of Edmo's work, which is um, this idea of providing academic input and methodological support to public authorities in monitoring the policies put in place by online platforms. And of course, this relates very much to the work under the code of practice um, at, in its previous form and in its future forms. Um, next slide, please. So very briefly, this gives you a bit of a snapshot of some of the activities of Edmo. I've already mentioned the secure collaborative platform. We have these maps and repositories. The framework to access data is currently, um, let's say, work in progress in the working group, which I mentioned. We also conduct trainings. We have already conducted a number of trainings on uh, basic and advanced fact checking, and we're aiming to have a new training on media literacy and uh, measuring impact in media 
media literacy activities soon and other trainings on EU policy and uh, more, uh, let's say, academic approaches to disinformation as well. Um, policy analysis, of course, this is a key part of Edmo's work in relation um, to both to the self-regulatory and co-regulatory developments that are happening in this field. Um, we organize workshop conferences. Um, we have a newsletter, so please sign up. We are active on Twitter. We produce a number of reports, policy reports, um, and other types of reports. So we encourage you to uh, keep an eye on our Twitter account and on our web page. Next slide, please. And finally, last but not least, in this very brief introduction, and there will be a lot to say, but I'm sure the next speakers will talk a lot more in detail about these different strands, um, the Edmo hubs. So we have, as Christina mentioned, eight hubs, national or multinational hubs already established. Here you get a quick snapshot of the countries that are already covered by um, hubs, by Edmo hubs. And the new call for hubs is now open. Uh, we will have an information session about this next week. So um, for those who are interested, please join us also on this occasion. And um, I think that's everything by way of introduction to Edmo's different strands of activities. But of course, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Lisa. <clears throat> uh, yes, now we go, as you announced, into the uh, nitty-gritty of the activities. So, we, for instance, you mentioned uh, that one of the pillars is uh, media literacy and digital literacy. So we have uh, with us Sonia Livingston that is um, streamlining the activities of the uh, EDMO on this field. Sonia, can you? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you uh, very much um, and happy to talk about media literacy. Um, so uh, it's a crucial pillar of Edmo's work and we have begun by um, mapping the complexity um, of Euro the European uh, media literacy landscape. Um, it must be said that there are in, there is in one sense very many activities um, on media literacy uh, ongoing across Europe. And yet, of course, the disinformation um, crisis has happened and it's a, a clear judgment that these activities need to be stepped up and better coordinated. So Edmo has been um, trying to um, identify the range of activities that are that are going on um, and each perhaps my, my first uh, point to make is that each works with a, a slightly different but overlapping definition of media literacy and emphasis on where to um, how, how to kind of frame this. Um, all the definitions, are, as I see it, and draw on the core elements that have always been there in both the academic and the practice field, which is that uh, citizens, and this is all citizens, um, children, adults, um, everybody, um, should uh, have the capacity to access, analyze, evaluate, and create communications using the technologies and the media um, opportunities available to them. I think what the disinformation um, uh, problem has really highlighted is the importance in that of evaluation. And so more, many of the kind of recent efforts really focus on that effort to uh, evaluate. But the whole thing is important. And there's plenty of research that shows that um, prioritizing particular elements of media literacy without um, recognizing the, 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 um, the diversity and complexity of the uh, effort, um, it, it doesn't work. And especially just promoting uh, technical skills, giving people kind of access and the technical skills to use um, digital uh, media does not address the uh, the kind of wider um, problem of disinformation. People need to be able to evaluate and create. Um, so um, I think uh, the second point I wanted to kind of make in my in my short intervention at this point is that media literacy um, while often a kind of go-to solution for um, regulators, and rightly so, um, must be understood in, a, in, in the wider frame. Uh, so media literacy can do so much, but it must be complemented with the activities of regulators, of fact checkers, um, and of the kind of uh, altered design of platforms, so that uh, the awareness raising and educational 
burden of media literacy is not enormous. It's kind of managed because there's only so much one can teach. There's only uh, so much that people are, are capable of learning. They learn at a certain pace about the complexities of the media environment. And that media environment itself needs to be kind of managed um, so that the task is not um, overwhelming. Uh, so um, media literacy is part of the, the, the kind of regulatory and, um, and, and technological mix. Uh, what Edmo has been doing most recently is um, working on kind of identifying all the players. Some of the players I can see are here um, in, the, in the Zoom room uh, and, and there are many others. So the European Commission, um, the Council of Europe, um, the um, European Association for Viewers Interests, uh, Ergo uh, and uh, Ergo, Ergo and um, EPRA, um, and many others are all involved. And I think it was a really crucial moment when the um, Audiovisual Media Services Directive was revised to kind of highlight the importance and the breadth of media literacy um, across Europe. And uh, 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 the AVMSD's insistence that uh, nation states would report on progress. Uh, it's, it's in a way it's surprising given the uh, crisis of disinformation and its impact on democracy in so many countries that this has been in practice disappointing, but the European, the Council of the European Union uh, reported last October that actually only a few member states have carried out that formal assessment of media literacy in their countries. Um, and so in one sense, um, it's quite hard to know what the level of implementation and improvement is, is um, visible across countries. There was a very um, uh, effortful and rigorous uh, attempt to evaluate media literacy in every member state in 2016, uh, and um, that produced some uh, promising but also results, but it also marked a kind of benchmark from which um, considerable improvements uh, are, are absolutely needed. So we've been mapping all the, 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 the different um, uh, uh, activities and um, we'll, um, we're, we're posting that on the Edmo uh, website. I think Edmo's specific um, planned contribution within this uh, is to kind of provide um, hub for knowledge and clarity about who is doing what and who is responsible for media literacy, um, both at European and uh, national level. And the hubs that Lisa just talked about will, will kind of especially take that forward. So Edmo's role will be to, to be the hub, to be the kind of knowledge resource, to raise awareness, to, um, uh, and we're, we're, we're having a, a, a really fascinating and, and, and discussion on which folk here might wish to uh, contribute about how to kind of highlight the best practices and how indeed to evaluate which are the best practices um, and uh, the question of evaluation perhaps is the one that is um, uh, preoccupying us most at the moment um, it seems obvious we want best practice to lead the way uh, and to inspire um, but evaluating how that should be done um, is um, a really crucial task and we, um, I believe, are making good progress on that, but um, we look forward to uh, input. And I will stop and pass the floor back to Giacomo at this point um, and look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sonia, for this contribution. But I hope that we will have time to come back because there are many questions for sure that uh, are coming out from your discussion. So the next. Uh, pillar of the Edmo activities we want to focus on is about the fact-checking activities. And for this, we have asked Giovanni Zagni, that is the director of Pagella Politica, that is one of the fact-checkers um, most uh, involved in this activity since years, to explain how it will work, what Edmo will do in order to help the fact-checkers in doing their activity at the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for this invitation. It's a pleasure to be here virtually. I mean, it would be better to be in Poland now, but so, sadly, we just have to be, I just have to be in Milan. And I will briefly explain what, what we, we have 
the work that we have planned for, for, for EDMO as coordinators of uh, fact-checking activities. So the need for cooperation among fact-checkers comes from one simple observation. So this information often, tra often travels across borders. We've, we've seen that a lot in the past few years, and we've seen that a lot in our activity as fact-checkers in Italy and as part of the international community of fact-checkers. So it travels not only because this information appears in one country and then spread to others, uh, but also because very often this information refers to other countries for its setting as the place where some other some things happened that actually didn't. One thing that we saw very often, for example, in the past few weeks, uh, are photos spread all over Europe of huge crowds. And in the various countries where this photo was spread, it was said that uh, it was, for example, anti-Green uh, Pass um, manifestations uh, in Italy. Green Pass being the, uh, basically the certificate that you have to show the, in order to uh, present the information that you are vaccinated or you, do, you tested negative to a COVID test. So in reality, those huge crowds weren't in Italy, but were a manifestation in, a, uh, in a, like a, a, a music festival in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. And the photo was taken years before. But since it appeared, for example, in, in, uh, in France or in the Netherlands or in other countries, in other countries outside, um, outside Europe, people uh, seeing those photos, uh, referring to Italy, uh, weren't immediately able to identify that city uh, as not being in Italy, for example. So in order to address these issues and in order to build a, a common response at, you, at the European level to these dynamics in this information, uh, ADMO has worked since... Uh, its uh, inception to do uh, quite a few different things uh, in the fact-checking work. So first of all, it has worked to build a network of European fact-checking organizations and to put in a single, in a common space, those, those organizations, there are currently more than 20 of them that cover basically all of Europe, and to promote trainings and networking activities among them. So the first thing is to make, have them work and uh, uh, talk among them. Uh, the, more practically, EDMO has fostered cooperative investigations um, through a platform that makes easier the sharing of the information among fact checkers. Now, I'll try to put a link in the, in the chat uh, because here, for example, you can see the result of the first collective investigation that was done through the platform. And it was an analysis of uh, how this information exploited the Afghan crisis. Uh, when the, the US left uh, Afghanistan, uh, there was a rush of disinformation all over the world about that event and in Europe too. And so what we did is that we asked the other fact checkers, what kind of disinformation have you seen in your country regarding Afghanistan? We put together all the information that we got and we published this article analyzing uh, which were the main trends around this uh, current event. Because as you very well know, this information, this information basically follow what, what's in the news in the news those days. So you, you have to, uh, follow the news in order to understand what the information will be about in, in a matter of hours, maybe sometimes, or, or days. Uh, this is not the only example. We've published uh, other ones where we uh, basically find a, a common topic or a common issue where there, are, there is disinformation circulating all over Europe, and we collect the information about those uh, disinformation cases and uh, uh, summarize them in those, in those reports. Not only that, we only also published uh, a few fact-checking briefs that every month um, 
summarizes which are the main trends in this information across uh, the European Euro and the European Union. Uh, so, for example, the last one published in, on November 15th, uh, and I will also put you the links to the to the fact checking briefs in the chat. Here we are. Yeah. Uh, the summarized what was happening uh, in, in, in the disinformation field in Europe uh, through, through October. And uh, for example, uh, just to quote one of the numbers that we, uh, that we, that we found is, it was that uh, COVID was not the, 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 the most, uh, um, the most uh, uh, frequent topic in this information across the organizations that participated uh, in, uh, the, in this uh, research by Edmo. So roughly two thirds of, uh, of the disinformation items that were uh, checked by fact checking organizations across Europe had to do with uh, something else. Uh, the, the percentage varies from country to country and from organization to organization, uh, but you can take a look at the brief uh, through, uh, for the details. So as you can see, we've tried to organize at the uh, continental level, basically, the sharing of information among all the major uh, fact-checking organizations. And I just briefly presented some of the main results. Uh, we plan to uh, deepen the cooperation in the coming weeks and months uh, to carry on the publication of both collaborative investigation and fact-checking briefs. And at the end of the day, to have a super uh, quick response tool for this information crisis in the upcoming month. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Um, very interesting. I think that this also raised uh, many questions. For instance, the fact that the network you mentioned of fact checkers is not closed, but it's an open uh, activity. I think, but we will come back later uh, during the during the question and answer. So, you have been also mentioned the, that there are the national hubs that will play an important role in the architecture of Edmo. And uh, we have, in fact, one of them with us, that is the Italian hub that is represented here by uh, Gianni Riotta, that is um, his chairperson. Uh, could Gianni explain how a national hub works and how we interact with the European activities? Thank you. Thank you very much. And I apologize for the uh, mask. I'm here with my two of my colleagues, Federica Urzo and uh, uh, Professor El Elena Musi, and they are both involved in the uh, Italian Digital Media Observatory. Thank you, Giacomo. And uh, there are many different uh, national labs. There are eight. And uh, we uh, cooperate with us. We try to help each other. We are in contact with the Central, that is from the uh, Central Europe, with the uh, Iberian uh, uh, um, Edmo and the Iberian hub that includes Spain and Portugal. And uh, the Italian Digital Media Observatory is quite unique because when we put together our uh, coalition, of course, Giovanni Zagni, uh, of Pagella Politica is one of the uh, founding uh, members of uh, the Italian Digital Media Observatory. We decided not to have just a, 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 an observatory and a coalition of researchers. Uh, we put together uh, media people, uh, both um, RAI, the Italian uh, Public uh, TV and Radio Network, and uh, uh, the, the Jedi Group with La Stampa and the Daily Correa della Sera is supporting us and La Repubblica. And also we have researchers here at the Lewis University where I'm uh, speaking from today and the University of Tor Vergata, the team of Professor uh, Gustavo uh, Piga. They do research especially on uh, uh, behavior and uh, business and economy. And then we have the, we have the T6 uh, think tank uh, people with us. And then we have team, the Italian uh, telecom uh, um, company that is trying, uh, helping us with monitoring uh, the conversation and the spreading of fake news and disinformation online. Uh, they have a huge, huge reservoir of data that we are 
uh, uh, canvassing and seeing how uh, uh, from abroad, as Gio Giovanni was saying, very often uh, this information starts from abroad and then lands in different countries. Uh, the speed of the, the, the disinformation uh, has uh, uh, incrementally uh, uh, increased in the past few years. Uh, we here at Lewis have done a research alongside the Italian Digital Media Observatory uh, with Harvard University, for example, checking out the QN and uh, uh, cult and the QN and political message spread from the United States under uh, President Trump to Europe uh, and adapting to all the different European countries with a local message in the local language uh, in the matter of just a few uh, uh, months. Uh, what IDMO is trying to do is to go a step uh, ahead of what we have been discussing so far. Uh, as you know, the European approach includes, uh, as Sonia was saying, uh, includes uh, a code of conduct, uh, includes working on e-literacy, uh, includes working on uh, uh, the banking and fact checking. We're trying to test these tools that we have been assigned to use. Uh, as you know, uh, there is no clear uh, scientific definition of what e-literacy uh, uh, really uh, means. So we are trying to test how we can use uh, uh, this tool. Very often, the, the, the champions of this information and people that share and use this information, I'm thinking now about uh, the, the pandemic uh, coronavirus uh, 19 uh, uh, community, the Novax and No Green Pass uh, communities, both uh, in Italy, Europe, and the United States. Very often, they are great. Uh, computer literate people. They can use the web, they can share information fast, they are very savvy when it comes to a uh, social platform. So uh, when we define uh, illiteracy, we have also to work on uh, rebuilding uh, uh, critical thinking, uh, uh, trusting sources and evaluating sources. And when it comes to fact checking and the banking, uh, we are working hard to uh, break uh, 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 the borders of communities, meaning that uh, in the United States, for example, uh, uh, the daily uh, newspaper Washington Post has done an excellent job in the banking false statements uh, issued by the office of former President Donald Trump, yet uh, they have failed they totally uh, fail to uh, uh, convey that uh, the banking and the fact checking outside the community of uh, uh, the readers of the Washington Post that uh, mostly are already set against that kind of disinformation. While uh, if you check another community, if you check, for example, the community of Fox News, that are people that use, share, uh, and with their main talk show uh, implement uh, this information, you'll see that they are totally, totally adamant that uh, they won't use that kind of the banking and that kind of fact checking and, uh, and will keep uh, spreading this information online. So this uh, uh, original coalition that we put together of uh, uh, technological companies, um, newspaper newsrooms and uh, uh, television uh, uh, newsrooms and researchers and uh, um, of course, we have also uh, Giovanni Zagni and Ispagella Politica and NewsGuard, another uh, debunking and uh, fact checking international uh, uh, organization. What we are trying to do is uh, to proceed in a twofold operation. And Giacomo uh, Mazzone knows it very well, having uh, uh, worked alongside us and advised us and shared. Uh, is wisdom with us uh, since day one. We are trying to uh, uh, study uh, uh, the phenomenon of disinformation with a scientific approach. And at the same time, we are trying to fight it both an editorial, uh, cultural, and political level. Uh, we, Edmo uh, and Idmo in Italy uh, is engaged in uh, talking to every different kind of institutions. We are seeing today uh, uh, the Senate, the uh, uh, deputy uh, uh, chairwoman of the Italian Senate, 
and uh, uh, we have talked to uh, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs often, and we have seen uh, um, international friends, uh, uh, ambassadors and diplomats from many different uh, European countries that have come to talk to us. Uh, we are engaged with other Italian companies uh, all over uh, uh, the country, and we are meeting uh, um, civic leaders, local leaders, and um, yesterday, two days ago, uh, we had at the book fair in Rome, a very successful meeting uh, with uh, uh, schools, uh, with high school uh, kids in uh, Rome, trying to uh, restart exactly from, uh, from them. This will be reproduced on a national level uh, from north to south. We're trying to, uh, with our AI, to develop and as a tv journalist you remember that we have timing no i'm done i'm done we we <laughs> we, we, we will we will uh, uh develop a standard a, a format that we will share uh, all across the country grazie giacomo thank you very much gianni uh, of course we could continue forever but uh, we have timing um, to respect and especially because the last speaker uh, of the panel that is lubos um, that is with us it is um, very important because it introduce uh, another dimension in this discussion, that is the dimension of the regulators. The EDMO activities is very tightly related with the regulators in Europe. So it means that we have, uh, this is, I think, the interest of the model. We have a, a model of monitoring that immediately could interact uh, interface with the regulators. So we expect that this once that the DSA, DMA regulation will be in place, uh, this interface existing will help to uh, immediately intervene and produce results in concrete action. Uh, Lubos, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the invitation for today's very important topic and, and event. Uh, yes, indeed, I will be talking about the approach of regulators and the collaboration of the regulators with Edmo. So ERGA is a European uh, uh, regulators group for audiovisual media services. These are the state authorities that are independent from governments, and they are tasked with the implementation of the audiovisual media service directive in, in the EU, and more broadly are media regulators. But we have to say that at the beginning of our activities here, there was no competence over, over this information uh, for the regulators in this area, but it was important for us to understand the this situation and of course try to get skills and capacities to to do the research and then if needed uh, to take action in this area now in 2018 uh, erga was tasked by the european commission because erga is advisory body to the commission uh, by the european commission to monitor the implementation of the code of practice now we've done this in the context of european elections elections for the european parliament which was a very good opportunity because of course these elections are taking place in every uh, member state so we had an ample opportunity to try uh, to see how the code is implemented in various countries in the eu we uh, we praise the <clears throat> the effort because we have to say that as as a first of its kind uh this kind of code uh was really opening a new area of collaboration uh between authorities and the platforms themselves but of course there were shortcomings that we were highlighting also and i think uh the, maybe the mo most important one uh is the lack of transparency in understanding how the implementation is done because there are some sub-reporting sub obligations by the platforms but in order to really see how the impact of code of practice is taking place on the member state level uh more need and the data will be needed and we of course uh then proposed to the commission and to the stakeholders and to the signatories how we we think that the uh, monitoring framework should look like in the future now in the meantime uh edmo was created and we of course knew from the beginning that this is extremely important because uh, regulators are you know usually good the things that they were doing before but now the research is extremely important and we see this as a big opportunity for us to to develop the capacities and understanding basically in this area so from the beginning we started an intense collaboration with edmo we were talking about how to in increase the transparency in the monitoring framework and then the commission used also hours of pro proposals uh, for their guidance for the next installment of the code of practice. This is currently, uh, the debate around this is currently going on and both uh, ERGA and EDMO 
are contributing to this uh, to this development very intensely. And in this uh, in this guidance by the Commission, that the Commission called for the signatories to improve the implementation of the code of practice and improve uh, the the commitments that are within the code, uh, is also a, a quite prominent place given to ed both Edmo and Erga in uh, terms of creating that really transparent monitoring framework. Uh, so what we are now seeing is that uh, we are working very intensely in seeing how we can, for example, uh, divide our, our future responsibilities. In, in the code, there are you know, two uh, main monitoring frameworks, so to say. One is on the service level, that is looking at what the platforms themselves are doing and the reporting, self-reporting that they are providing to the commission and how to make these much more transparent and uh, uh, create a kind of responsibility structure there. The other is to see uh, how, how the, the society is impacted, impacted by the implementation of code itself. And we see uh, both that Erga, for example, is better placed to see, uh, to, to look after and to monitor the, the service level indicators, and Edmo is better placed to see and, and to monitor the, the, the structural level, so to say, so the societal uh, level indicators. Of course, this, this is not a clear cut, but as you can see, we already are trying to work out how we can work together in the near future. Now, it is also important for us, uh, as, uh, once again, and even beyond the, the problem of code of practice, to develop, to develop the capacities and understanding in, in means of, of research. And for this, we are relying uh, very much on the hubs that were just uh, very recently created, because we think that uh, many of the, of the problems that we are seeing have a kind of different, uh, different context on the ground, so to say, because now the problem is global. The, the services are global, but in Europe, you have 27 states that uh, where the context might be different. So we need to understand how these processes and these problems are developing on the ground. And for those, it is really important that the, the local regulators in every member states can work with the researchers that are based there. And for the Edmo hubs are, are just a great opportunity to do that. So we are encouraging our members to really meet with the researchers, try to uh, work together and even, even put down the plans uh, for their future uh, collaboration. And the, the last thing I would like to mention is that uh, we, what we see in the digital environment, and especially in the problem of disinformation, you know, this is very sensitive topic, of course, when we are talking about content regulation, it is always about uh, uh, the balancing the, the protection of public interest, but of course, respecting the uh, freedom of expression and freedom of media, for example. So it is not about regulating per se, I would say. It is much more, probably the better word is governance. And for, for those, you need a kind of soft approach. And what's, what Sonia uh, was, was saying about media literacy is a very, uh, the understanding of that and to take up that workload is also something very important for the regulators. So for the future, to work with the researchers and to find out how the, 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 the processes uh, are, are functioning and to, to be able to convey to the users uh, the current problems that are existing, where the, where, uh, the, the solution might lie, where are the measures that, the, and tools that themselves can use will be very much uh, a, a new task for the regulators. And for this, again, to work with ADMO and especially on the member state level uh, with ADMO hubs will be extremely important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lubos, for this precious complement of the description. We are short on time, but uh, I would like very much to have some questions and some interaction with, with the audience here in the room, and others are already in the chat. So there is somebody in the room. You have to go to the mic over there, if you don't mind, please. Oh, thank you very much. My name is Nini. I'm from Georgia. Thank, uh, thank you, first of all, for this very informative interactions regarding this indeed very important topic. It was uh, quite interesting to see different pillars of Edmo activities and at the end also to have the uh, perspective from a regulatory body. I myself represent the Georgian National Communications Commission, which is the regulatory body in the fields of telecommunication and broadcasting. At the same time, back in 2019, we have been assigned the function to ensure the development of the media literacy in the country, and we are implementing a number of different projects with this aim. Um, I would like to thank you for outlining the activities of EDMO that are planned or being already 
already implemented on European level. level. At the same time, I would like to outline that the, this information is an enormous challenge for the partner countries of the European Union as well, and I can confirm that on behalf of Georgia. Um, as one of the speakers underlined, uh, this information doesn't have borders, so it is extremely, to, extremely important to enhance cooperation on international level as well. And therefore, I would appreciate if you could provide uh, information as to concrete mechanisms of cooperation with partner, partner, partners, part uh, partner countries within EDMO. And you also mentioned the hubs that are being established in different European Union member states. Are there any plans to establish that chaps also in the partner countries as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. The very pertinent question. Um, I don't know if there are other in the room that uh, there is a mic over there. Eventually, if I see that you approach, it means that you have a question because I have another one in the chat from uh, uh, Julian Rappert Bismarck. Uh, I can read uh, the question or Sonia and is for Sonia is about the media literacy. Um, Julian is mentioning this uh, work in five countries uh, with uh, 1,500 classrooms where they try to explain to children um, about media and how to understand what is fake, what is true. Uh, Sonia, do you have a, an answer or a comment on this experience? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to put a link to a report in the in the chat, which has um, uh, reviewed all the different ways of evaluating, you know, which which um, media literacy interventions do work. I think what you um, suggest there is the kind of classic before and after. Um, if you measure um, children's knowledge before the intervention and after, you get one. Um, measure of improvement. As you say, it is, of course, self-report. If you do um, an experimental and a control group, you give the literacy intervention to one class and compare their knowledge with that of another, um, that's a much stronger test. And um, most um, educational interventions can do this. You first teach one class and then the other. Uh, the um, evaluation research does, in fact, show that there is um, quite a lot of um, careful, um, detailed um, design of interventions that's needed because many interventions are designed that don't work very well. And the uh, report that we uh, recently did at LSE for um, Ofcom, for our communication regulator, showed the importance of um, interventions which require cognitive effort on the part of, of, of those who are being um, educated. That shouldn't be a surprise, but I think sometimes there's a temptation to do kind of quick fire, rather glitzy, rather kind of fun interventions. Actually, um, more thoughtful, more effortful ones um, uh, work better and, and, and last longer. Um, there's more I could say, but I think um, Giacomo wants to squeeze in another answer. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, so we have, um... Uh, we have to owe an answer to our Georgian colleague. Um, I don't know if Christina or Lisa want to react. Sure, maybe just on the question of how, um, let's say, EDMO can contribute also outside of EU countries. I would say that a lot of the work that EDMO is doing, including, for instance, in the area of media literacy, we hope will then serve as a uh, useful tool also out beyond Europe. So this is very much uh, the idea also behind this session. So whether it is mapping of what's going on in Europe, but also, let's say, uh, pushing forward the debate about uh, measuring best practice and impact in media literacy, we hope this kind of conversation can then contribute also to um, countries beyond Europe. But I would say the same goes for all the different areas of uh, EDMO's activities, also in the, the work that is being done in the working group on access to data, the work that is being done in the policy field. I think these can all serve as, let's say, useful examples, including this broad example of the multi-stakeholder approach of EDMO, we hope can serve as a uh, useful example and inspiration to other areas. But on the more concrete um, question of funding hubs beyond Europe, I guess this is not in our hands. But uh, I understand that the EDMO as it stands is very much looking at EU countries. 
Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, probably not the answer that uh, was expected, but is an answer. Uh, the European Commission doesn't comment, but um, we'll do later. There is a last question in, in the chat for Lubos. I don't know if Lubos has seen it. If not, I can... Yes, indeed. Yes, I understand it. If, if I, because I understand it for the sake of time. Uh, well, uh, to, what can we do in the draft of Digital Services Act to, to guarantee media parity? Well, the D Digital Services Act is a horizontal kind of uh, uh, tool, so I don't think that media uh, plurality can be addressed there. Very directly, we are relying on the Media Freedom Act to do just that. Uh, there are things around transparency uh, that can be strengthened in the, in the Digital Services Act that would help many things and also media literacy. So, you know, to, to, to strengthen the transparency about algorithms and the recommender systems, I think that that would be uh, 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 probably in this direction. And if I can also answer to our colleague from Georgia, I can just say that we have another network of regulatory authorities called EPRA. Uh, our Jordan authority, uh, the Georgian authority is part of that. And we are now trying to translate our uh, uh, what we learned, you know, from the process in the in the EU, also to this network, to to spread it to our our, our colleagues from other countries, and of course we are also looking for the very practical ways how to to work around um, uh, the, the problem of disinformation. We just established a close relationship with Vienna University specifically on this account, so hopefully we will we will help also all the regulators also outside of the EU to get the skills and capacities in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lubos. Then uh, our time is up, but um, I have to give the floor for a very short final intervention to somebody that is still, has been silent till now, that is the rapporteur of the session, that is Eric uh, Lambert, that is with us. Eric, um, we have been asked by the IGF to, um, to take notes about the way forward, something that uh, could be actionable in the near future. What are your thoughts after this session? No thoughts? Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> um, uh, th thank you, Giacomo. Uh, very, very interesting uh, session. Um, maybe there are a few questions on some areas that were not covered that might be interesting. Uh, one thing is uh, obviously about monitoring the code of practice and the reinforced uh, code. Um, how, uh, what about collaboration with the public? issues like having citizen browsers blocking what is happening, which, for example, go against the community rules of the platform. So is that something that should be looked into? Uh, and of course, that linked to having to collaborating not only with having more input for the general from the general public into the activities of Edmo, is that a possibility that is considered in which areas? Another question is obviously we have the national hubs but uh, uh, information travels with language. So what about minority languages, uh, disinformation in uh, our immigration populations? Uh, what is Edmo doing about that to gain the knowledge to be able to follow that, which is uh, also something important. Um, and the last question maybe is that, uh, uh, we, uh, er, 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 there is an issue about the, DS, uh, the DSA, Digital Service, Digital Market Act. There is some monitoring there, task for EDMO. Uh, we have the issue that uh, m m many of the issues are linked to media regulation and not to market regulation. And the DMA, DSA is very much market indicated. and where are the how to ensure that we have the necessary knowledge in the regulatory authorities when they are not converged yeah indeed you are right and i think that lubos gave us a beginning of answer to this last question that you raised mm -hmm. is the fact that he expect more from the media freedom um, uh, document that the commission will soon uh, reveal and will be discussed next year so we have a path okay a lot of um, good thoughts and ideas a lot of question and answer that's good because it gives up the tide for continuing the discussion and uh, eric will publish in two hours this is the commitment the a, a first report so that can be shared through the uh, the platform of the igf and then we will have a 
proper report in uh, 10 days out, out from now. Thank you everybody for the patience and sorry for being a little bit longer than expected. <laughs>